for the Houston Rockets. Welcome back to First Take. We are coming to you live from above the Heineken River Deck at Pier 17. And there look he is. Who it hey. is. I'm here. I made it. Joining us now in <laughs> studio, six time NBA All Star Amari Stoudemire, who is joining us on behalf of the Big Three. Amari, how's it going? It's going great. Good morning. Good morning. You know, as you've seen, we have a lot to talk about today. Big trade going down last night. What's your reaction to that? I saw that. I think I think it's a good move. I think Houston's now, uh, you know, with, with having Rush there, they got a chance to somewhat compete with the rest of the league. Uh, it's up to Dan Tone to figure out how it's going to work, but uh, I'm sure he'll figure it out. You sure player, he will? You sure he will, huh? Yeah, I think That's so. Been a big question I think here so. Today. It's it's going to be tough to handle, but I think he got a chance to. Stat when you when you play for Dan Tony, it was a work of art. It was pick and roll spacing. Y'all would pick the pick the league apart. They got to isolation basketball in Houston last year. You think he can get back to that flow that you had going with Steve Nash? Do you what do, what do you see Dan Tony getting into? I think I think what's got to happen is that. Um, you know, they both got to figure out a way to play together because they're both the ISO players and they both demand the ball. And there's only one ball in the basketball court. Mm. So if, if, if D'Antoni can figure out how to get those guys to still be great and, and also win, it's a tough job on his hands, but I'm sure he can figure it out. Is it on the players or is it on D'Antoni? It's on D'Antoni and also the players. The players got to accept the change of roles. I mm. mean, some, somebody somebody have to take less shots or not, but depending on the situation, you got you to gotta sacrifice at times. But, Mari, let's say I put you as head coach of the Houston Rockets, all right? And I know you're in the big three for now, in the NBA perhaps tomorrow. But you're the coach for a moment. Every Luddy likes the talent accumulation. I mean, they're both massively talented and great players as individuals. But we got to make it work together. And as you point out, and the point I've been trying to make today is they're virtually similar. ISO, high usage, drive players. Russ doesn't shoot well. So you can't imagine a situation where James has the ball the entire time and Russ has to play off. I'm just trying to figure out, as you're standing there, talking to Russ and James Harden, trying to convince them of certain roles, what are the roles you're convincing them of? Well, you know the key of basketball is ball movement. If, if, if you can figure out a way to allow James to still be great and allow them to move the ball properly, then you have the best-case scenario. And it won't be easy. You've got to convince these guys to play off the ball sometimes. Uh, if Russ wants to take control of the ball, James play off the ball and vice versa. Um, and so once you figure out a nice flow offensively with both of those guys, and I think it'll work. Who closes out for him? Big shot, final final minute, last possession. Who takes it, Russ or James? Who, oh, the, who'd you get the ball to? The beard, bro. Absolutely. Mm. The beard, that doesn't no even question. seem like a close uh, call. Yeah, no question. No question. I mean, y'all act like Russ can't hit a big shot now. Come on now. No, he can. He can. But but James is obviously one of the best ISO players we've probably ever seen in the game of basketball. And his shot is, is pure. You know, he's a high, he has a chance to definitely be one of the all-time greats. And close the game out, I'm giving the ball to James for sure. Mm, mm. Fact, fact, fact. All right, question for you, Amari. So you're in the big three right now. On Monday, you held workouts for 15 NBA teams. So why should the teams give you a shot this season? Well, I think I've been staying in shape all, all for the past three years, actually, since I played in Miami. I uh, went overseas and played professional basketball. I trained every summer. I trained with Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, uh, James Harden. I see these guys all summer, and I train with these guys, high-level basketball. And I go right into a season mm. of playing professional basketball overseas. You know, it's the big leagues over there. Guys make good money, and it's, and it's a very serious game uh, when you play over in Europe. So I've been staying in shape all those, all those years, and I feel great now. See, what's the, what's the, give me a team that you think, and you can't give me 30 teams. you gotta give me, you got to give me one or two. The, a team that could really benefit from what you would bring them right now. Uh, I mean, you have, you have guys, teams that are, have a lot of young players. Yeah. Um, that are, you know, the next wave of greatness. And I think having young veteran, uh, veteran guys on the team that can help them mold into becoming professionals at a high level um, will be beneficial. I can't really point to one or two teams at the moment, but there are teams that can use that type of veteran leadership uh, for sure. So, you know, your mindset is I'm going to be a role player or the same star? Sounds like you, whatever's needed. Whatever's needed. Being a role player, ninth, tenth guy on the, on the, on the squad, uh, helping guys to train and, and just training those guys before practice or whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, I'm that guy. So, so has it? Uh, I will say this back to you playing. You know, because we played together overseas, played against each other. Big, big three last two years. 
But physically, bro, like, you look better than almost when you're – like, you look great now. Like, is it just playing against these guys day to day? What's the routine? Like, what have you done? Like, what has changed, bro? Because, you, I mean, you're ready. Yeah, you know what? I, I actually took a, took a note of a good friend of mine who played dual sport. It was an NBA uh, uh, football, major league uh, uh, baseball player and also NFL football player. Huh. And he said one thing you got to do, Stat. He said get down to your lowest weight possible and be as strong as you possibly can be. And so I took that into consideration. I got down to 235, hit the weights extremely strong, and, and put a nice regimen of training and recovery together. And I put at least six figures every summer into training and recovering. Huh. And so now my body feels amazing. Yeah. And so I feel like why not, you know, take the chance of trying to make it back to the NBA and see what I can do from there. Amari, you did something that apparently very few other people in the NBA want to do. You signed with the New York Knicks. There's been a lot of conversation on this show in particular, and the man that normally sits where Ryan's sitting right now, about why the New York Knicks cannot become a free agent destination? How is it they can't attract somebody? Why won't KD come to New York? Why won't Kyrie come to New York and play for New York? That perhaps you saw it one time, or perhaps after signing, saw it wasn't there. What's the problem with the Knicks? Well, I, th- I think right now it's a matter of not winning is the, is the major problem. And the notion of the organization not being as professional as it should be. Uh, when I signed with the Knicks, it was... Great. We had a great organization. We had great GMs. We were, had a nice young team that we were trying to build off of, and it was a perfect fit at the time. I think now, with with the history of not winning now for some years and uh, the connotation of, of, of the organization not being as professional as it should be, I think players are somewhat shying away from that. Uh, but eventually, with the young guys, with Coach Fisdale doing with, the, with those young guys there, I think they will continue to get better as a team and an organization and hopefully the tables turn in the near future. What, you, do you, yeah, what, what do you mean by, yeah, by, yeah, yeah. by not professional? Well, no, I mean, I, dis, I disagree with those connotations because I had an amazing experience when I played with the Knicks. But I think from the outside, it, the, you know, without, when, when you're not winning, you know, all the negativity comes upon the organization, I, um, which I think is, is not fair. How do you feel about, like, all these super teams, all these guys, buddy-buddy, you were a star in the league, joining up saying, hey, man, three of us are going to New York. We're going to Brooklyn. We're going to L.A. We're going to the Clippers. There's so much of that going on now that you didn't have to deal with, you didn't see before. If you were playing in today's NBA and you were, you know, all-star level, could you see yourself teaming up with a guy or just, hey, I'm going to go where I'm going to go and see how it fits? Uh, this is a new wave with that now. You yeah. know, when I, when I signed with the Knicks, there was a chance for me to play in Miami with LeBron and, uh, and, and, and D. Wade at the time. Um, mm-hmm. But I decided I think they went with the Chris Bosh move and I went to New York and played with the Knicks. But I think toward that part of my career is when, it, when it, the shift started to change where guys wanted to link up and play as a unit. Uh, but before that, it was more so like, who's the best player? I'm going to compete against the best. Well, you got that phone call. Why didn't you make that move? Well, I mean, obviously it was very early in the uh, in, in free agency. Uh, Pat Riley and the guys were the first one that called me during free agency. And so it was a negotiating tactic that took place from that point. And for agency is a time where you want to listen to every mm. team. And you want to weigh out your options. And so that's, that's how it went down. You regret that move at all? It wasn't my decision. Wow. I, mean, I, was, I was definitely trying to, uh, to link up with LeBron because he's obviously uh, the premier player mm. in, our, in our generation. And these guys are walking uh, NBA final appearance. And yeah. so I was for sure <laughs> trying to link up with LeBron for sure. You you know, know, do you ever ahead. look back and think that things could be different? Should that have been the move you made, hypothetically, or anything like that? I mean, if it was my decision, for sure, I would have played with du- uh, Dwayne and LeBron. But uh, the Knicks was the team that I wanted to definitely uh, play with as well. With me being from New York, for say, I was raised here uh, for six, seven years of my childhood years. And to mm-hmm. be here in New York playing for the Knicks cool. was, was, was big for me. We talked about which teams you would fit in on. We've had a conversation with Kendrick Perkins today. Ryan's given his or in some cases, lack of leadership he's been on some teams. Where do you think a guy like Chris Paul, if it's true that Oklahoma City is going to move him on from Oklahoma City, where would be a right place for Chris Paul to fit in? Well, you know, he's a, he's a future Hall of Fame point guard. And uh, I think what he brings to the table is a lot of leadership. Um, uh, he can teach the next wave of point guards how to, how to be a true point guard. Uh, as far as a team for him, it's a great question. 
Uh, he's, he's a ball dominant point guard, so therefore, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to pinpoint a, like a specific team for him this season. But uh, hopefully, everything works out for the best for him and his family, and he's able to land a nice place where he can finish off his career strong. I just want to finish up, man. Look, we're going to make a petition. Why, if I'm an NBA GM, why am I taking you? Why Amari Stoudemire? Why now? Why would I not just go get it? You know, they go, it's a numbers game. Go get one of these young kids, young, fresh legs to fill the roster. Why Amari? Well, the thing is, I mean, if you, if you go get young players, okay, they, they still have a lot of room to improve. The potential is, is the key of it all. For a guy like myself who can actually, you know, be a leader to these young guys mm. and actually teach them the game mm, and also facts. be available to show them how to work. You know, I, I've throughout my entire career, I've trained at a high level, always worked out early professionally. Uh, you can ask any players that I play with or any team I play for, I was always the first guy in the gym, last guy to leave, and I would show guys how to be professionals uh, from an action point of view. All right, well, we like mm. to have fun on this show, so Amari, before you go, we got a piece of video we want to show everybody. Okay. <laughs> Let's okay. see it. There he is. Oh. Y'all better oh, oh, not. Oh, oh, Why would y'all oh, put oh, this oh, on? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, who is that? Ooh. Who's that right there? Oh, oh no, so Amari. Is that, is that Booty Call? I was so That's mad. Booty Call. Oh, oh, God. God. Wow. That's Why would y'all do this? See, see, okay. <laughs> okay, I see. Oh, my God. Ooh. I was so mad at Kevin Love, bro. I was so mad at Why? Kevin Love. Why? Amari is just doing it to you because you switched right Because he let him go. <laughs> hey, we're not wrong. Hey, we played overseas too, bro. You played in the Canary Islands, man. We had a, we had a great competitive yeah. matchup there as well, man. No, we went out again. That was a fun Competitive game, meaning you dunked on him in the Canary Islands too? No, no, he's playing <laughs> great. We had a yo, good time. Yo, yo. Listen, because Kevin Love takes him. And then Kevin Love hits the Ole, and I'm like, you gonna let this man get to his right hand? It's the setup. Like, come on, man. Are Ryan, you gonna wear the, are you gonna wear the glasses? Today. When you come yesterday, back? It's not a Yeah, for sure, man. I wear them for protection. You gonna wear those glasses? Oh, yeah. Hey, real quick, I wrote it down. You said young teams that need veteran leadership that might be on the verge of coming through, okay? I wrote it down. How about the Atlanta Hawks for Mari Stoudemire? Hawks young team. Hawks is a good team. Pacers are already kind of there, but they're young. They sure. can do some. The sure. Kings right there on the verge. Sure, sure. And sure. Uh, my team, the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah, yeah. Said, those teams that could those, use some Amari's awesome You definitely teams. not Great Vince's calls. age, but Vince could still hoop. You got a lot left in the tank, yo. Yeah, thank it, you. Man. What I like to tell people, people don't realize this about you. You are literally an elite. You are in a way above average athleticism still. So, man, right. you still got a lot left, yo. For sure. Thank All right, you. Amari, thank you so much. Good luck this weekend in your big three game. Thanks for having me. Hope to thank see you. you come back with the what dub. What about my big three game? Hey, we're not talking about you right now. <laughs> All right, coming up next on first take, Damian Woody stopping by again? and we'll discuss it. Play. Melvin Gordon is an elite running uh, back and if he week. should sit out next season. That debate coming up next on first take. Hey, man, y'all, y'all If vacation is the best part of summer, why don't you make it part of the summer? How you say? Easy. On that one day. Woo! Vacation isn't about where you are, it's about how you see things. Why wait for a week on the French Riviera when I can enjoy the whole summer right here on the Hudson?